Hey, this is Waylon from Swiftwood Bows, and this is part four of our board bow build. In this video, we are going to start the process of tillering. And if you don't know what the word tillering means, it essentially means that we're going to reduce the thickness of our bow in a way that allows it to bend very evenly so that the stress is distributed evenly along the limbs, making for a durable and efficient bow. The first step in a good tiller will be to give ourselves a line that will establish a basic taper from slightly thicker here near the handle out to just a little bit thinner at the tips. My first step here is going to make a mark at three quarters of an inch thick right here at the, at the widest part of our bow at the end of our fade. Now here at the tip of our bow, I'm gonna measure 5 eighths of an inch. And I'm measuring from the back of the bow. Now I'm going to simply connect these two dots that I made. Here at the fades, I'm just going to kind of hand draw a nice even line traveling from this three, three quarter inch mark up to meet where my handle starts, just to provide a smooth transition. Doesn't have to be perfect right now, we just want to get the general transition in there. I'm going to do the same thing that I did on that limb on the other side. Now that we've got our lines drawn on the bow, but before we remove any wood, I just want to talk for just a second about why I chose the numbers that I did and how you can decide what's best for your project. So when we lay out a bow, we can be very precise about the, the width profile, how wide the bow is going to be, how it tapers. All of that can be very prescribed for any given project. But when we're talking about thickness, every piece of wood is different. Every bow is different. You can't pick one thickness and say, this is what my bow is gonna end up at for its final thickness. And so what we're doing here is we're just giving ourselves a basic guide. We're being very conservative. Our goal is to get some of this wood removed so that we can get closer to getting the bow to flex just a little bit. Um, I don't want to take all the wood off in one go and have it be ready to brace and to draw. That's too much wood all at once. There's too much unknown about what's gonna happen when I take that wood off. So the tillering process is necessarily a gradual process. The amount of taper that I have, in this case going from three quarters to five eighths, I chose because of the design of the bow that we're using. The pyramid design is very wide here at the fades. It's very narrow at the tips. There's a lot of transition happening from here to here. That means that we need less thickness transition happening from the fades to the tips. So we only have about an eighth of, a tran eighth of an inch transition from here to the tip. And we may not even have that much when we're finished. A lot of pyramid bows end up almost having a parallel thickness going down the whole limb because so much of the transition is happening here. On other designs, for example, the American flat bow, where this width is maintained out to a midway point, and then transitions down, you're gonna have a little bit more of a thickness taper, and even more so on a bow like an English longbow where there's very little width, and that width stays pretty constant throughout the bow. There's a little bit of a taper, but there's also quite a bit of taper happening in the thickness. You don't have to remember all of that. My only point is that the, the degree of thickness taper is, is relative to the amount of taper that's happening on the width profile. I hope that makes sense, but I think it's an important note because not every project's gonna be the same and you can't always pick the same numbers for every project. Now we're simply gonna use our draw knife again to remove all of the wood from the belly down to our line. Make sure that the belly is staying parallel to the back, that one edge is not becoming thinner than the other. You should have a line marked on both sides to keep an eye on that. Remember your faceting technique where you can take off wood on the edge and then on the other edge and then take off the wood in the middle.
I've got the thickness reduced down to my line here. I'm gonna do something called floor tillering, which is just bending the bow against the floor to see how it's starting to flex. So I put the tip against the ground. I put one hand here on the handle and I have the other hand up at the top tip. And I'm just gonna push my hand into the handle. And as you can see, it's just starting to flex a little bit, which is about what I expected. Um, and that's okay. I'd, if it was bending a little bit more than that, that would be fine. Um, if it was bending a lot more than that, I would have felt like I took too much off in my first go. So like I said, we want to stay conservative here in the beginning when we're removing wood. We want to get it so it's just flexing a little bit and then we're going to take some more off. I'm going to draw a new line on here so we have a new guide to take a little bit more wood off the belly. Last time we took it down to three quarters of an inch thick here at the fade. Let's go down to five eighths here. Once again, from this point here at the widest, I'm going to slope up into my handle. Down here at the tip, we did it to five eighths, so let's bring it down to one half. So from five eighths to one half this time basically just shaving an eighth of an inch off of our belly. Doesn't seem like much, but every bit of thickness that we take off of the limb here will have a big impact on the strength of the bow. And once again, our goal is just to get it bending a little bit further. Now that I've got my new lines drawn on all four sides, I'm just gonna do the same thing that I did again and use my draw knife to bring the belly thickness down to my new line. I've taken that next eighth of an inch off. So we're down to five eighths here at the fades and a half an inch at the tips. And when I bend this, you'll see that it's made quite a difference. It's still fairly stiff, but it's bending a lot more than it was. So I'm happy with that amount of progress. I don't want it to go all at once. So my goal right now is to get this bow ready to string for the first time, or we call it um, bracing the bow. So what I'm looking for when I bend the bow is that it looks like it's bending relatively throughout the whole length of the limb, and that one side is pretty much as strong as the other side. You can see also that now that we've taken off some belly wood, this transition between the working limb and the handle is smoother. It's not quite so jarring. And our goal is to continue keeping that smooth as we reduce the belly. So before I can string this bow, it needs to be a little bit easier to bend. So I need to take some more wood off the belly. I don't think I'm gonna draw myself any more lines. It's time to go into kind of a new stage of tillering here where I'm just gonna be reducing the wood evenly along the belly. I'm gonna switch away from the draw knife. The draw knife is a little bit too aggressive now and there's a risk that it could um, bite in and take a chunk out of the wood. So I'm gonna switch over to my rasps, um, which will be slower, but I'll have more control. As I'm taking wood off, I'm probably going to, you know, do a pass with the, with the farrier's rasp, taking a bit of wood off. And then frequently, I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna be feeling with my fingers the thickness of the bow and I'm gonna slide my fingers down the length of the bow. And what I wanna feel is that there's a very consistent thickness to the bow. That it, if there's any place where the bow is too thick, I can feel it bulge up. I'm gonna to need to remove wood there to bring it in line with the other areas. If I feel a spot that dips down and is thin compared to the other areas, I'm gonna mark it and I'm gonna stay off of that area. I'm gonna remove wood everywhere else until the rest of the limb comes in line. Our fingers are a really important tillering tool in addition to using our eyes as we watch the bend of the bow. 
So get in the habit of stopping and feeling that taper frequently. It's gonna make a big difference in how your tiller turns out. So this bow is ready to take a little bit more off the belly. I'm gonna get out my rasp and I'm gonna dig in. So my goal here is consistent and even wood removal so that I'm not creating thin spots or thick spots. So I'm going to kind of pace myself and pay attention as I go along. Before I go any further with um, wood removal from the belly or bending the bow, <clears throat> I wanna take care of these really sharp edges that we have. Now that the bow's bending a little bit, when we have sharp corners like this, especially on the back of the bow, it's an invitation for a splinter to, to pop and lift off because a lot, of for, um, a lot of stress gets concentrated along these edges and by rounding it off, it dissipates some of that. So first I'm gonna start with the fine edge of the farrier's rasp and just kind of gently and consistently at a 45 degree angle back of the bow. I'm just gonna lightly take off that corner I'm gonna do that on all four edges of the back. After I do that with the, the farrier's rasp, I'm gonna take a card scraper and I'm gonna clean up the rasp marks and make that rounded edge smooth with the card scraper. Go ahead and clean up the sides of your bow too. Here are my back edges all rounded over. I don't know how well you can see that radius, but that's about what we're going for. It doesn't have to be super extreme. Some people say about the radius of a P. Um, I always like rounding over the back edges. It always helps me feel like I've got more of a bow and less of a stick. Um, especially, you know, I think some people when they're making board bows, they kind of get in this, I don't know if they think about it this way, but they get into this mentality that, you know, starts off looking like a board um, and it kind of ends up looking like a board, but that's not totally necessary. In fact, it's not prudent to have, have those sharp edges on a bow. And in my opinion, anyway, I, having rounded edges on a bow, just more rounded features in general is more attractive. So now that my back corners are rounded over, I'm gonna remove some more wood on the belly to get it bending a little bit more. One thing I noticed when I was floor tailoring this bow is that I'm getting a lot more bend in my outer limbs and it's stiff here in the inner limbs, which doesn't surprise me given that there's that 1 8 inch taper on this pyramid bow. So what's happening is that there's too much width and thickness combined in this inner part of the limb compared to what's out here. So I'm going to focus my first pass just on the inner half of each limb and see if I like the way that it's bending a little bit more. So I'm not gonna make you watch um, all of my wood removal. I just wanna give you a, a couple pointers on how I go about taking wood off evenly with a rasp. So I try to pace myself and pay attention that I'm taking the same amount off as I move along and not focusing too much on any one spot or favoring one edge over the other. I like to use that same faceting technique that I used with the draw knife where I take off wood on one edge, I take off wood on the other edge and that leaves a rise in the middle and then I take that so that the limb is flat again. Not only is it more efficient with the tool but I think it allows me to have more control over how much I'm taking off. Always remember to use your fingers between wood removal to make sure that your, cons your taper is remaining consistent. I did the little bit of rasping on my inner halves of my limbs. I like how it's bending a little bit more at floor tiller. The next step is gonna be to put some string grooves in here so that we can 
put a long string on it and put it on the tillering tree, get a better sense of the weight that it's at and get a better sense of how it's bending. So I've chosen self knocks for this bow because I want to keep it simple. Um, if you'd like to have tip overlays on your bow and you know how to do it, or you'd like to follow, follow the directions on uh, my other video that I made on how to do tip overlays, you're welcome to do that. Um, but in this video, I'm just gonna show self knocks. The first step will be to measure an inch down from the tip and make a straight line across. This is the back of the bow. That's important to point out. And I'm going to take my little rat tail file here and right on that line on one of the corners, I'm just going to start a little groove. And then before I get it very deep, I'm going to match it on the other side. And I want to make sure that they're perfectly lined up with each other. One's not higher than the other on the bow. Now before I, before I go any further, I want to make a really important um, point about self knocks. This is the intact back of the bow. I never want to completely violate that by filing across it. The grooves are going to be on the side. There's always going to be a strip here between the two grooves that is this intact back of the bow. If I cut across that and the string is resting down in a groove all the way across the back, the pressure of the string can split the wood out and damage or break your bow. Once I've got those little grooves established, I want to turn it on the side here and I want to get the rest of the groove lined up here. So it's going to be at about a 45 degree angle overall. It's going to be a little bit um, more blunt here at the top and it's going to be a little bit more angled here at the bottom. That's because the string, most of the pressure of the string is going to be right up here at this top corner and we want to make it a little bit more robust by having it squared off. And down here we want the string to have a nice smooth transition so that it's not forced against a sharp corner there because that'll wear the string down. So you'll see what I mean once I start making the, the groove. Before I get it very deep, I want to flip the bow over and get the other side started and make sure that they line up with each other, both here on the back and on the belly. Right now this one's coming out a little bit further down the bow than this one, but because they're so shallow, I've got a chance to correct that angle. So I'm just going to force this up that way a little bit with my file. So as you're deepening these grooves, keep flipping it over doing a little bit on each side and checking. That's really the best way to get them looking really good and symmetrical and lined up. I haven't found that drawing lines for myself to follow ultimately really helps with that because there's just too much nuance and I end up deviating from those lines anyway. So just pay attention, check a lot, and they'll line up. <laughs> We just need to get the grooves deep enough to safely hold a string right now. We're not totally refining the tips right now, we're just getting them functional. So get yourself a string and put it in there and make sure that it feels secure. Now we're going to do one last thing here. Um, you remember how I said that we want to have this leading edge up here to be square-ish? So I'm going to take the file and I'm just going to kind of take the corner off of this leading edge here to make this a little bit more robust. 
for the string to sit on. Down here, I'm just going to smooth out this transition so that the string isn't wearing on any sharp edges. We can also take a scraper and just round over our corners down here because the string is going to be sliding up and down on here. Like I said, we don't need to make this beautiful right now. In fact, I think it's better to keep it kind of blocky and robust right now while we're in the early tillering stages. And later on, we can make the tips look really nice. I've got the string grooves carved into both ends. The next step is going to be to put a long string on the bow and put it up on the tiller tree. Start bending it a little bit, see what the weight's looking like, and see if we can see any problems with how it's bending. So I'm not going to go over building a string. I have another video on my channel that you can look up on how to build a Flemish loop string. So if you feel so inclined to build your own strings, which I highly recommend, um, you should check that video out and make yourself a string. But we're just going to assume that you've got a string to carry on with this video. So a long string is just a bowstring that is just a little bit longer than your bow so that it's not holding your bow at brace, but there's a little bit of slack. So I highly recommend using a as short of a long string as you can. You don't want a ton of slack hanging down. The more slack you have, the less accurate your information is going to be, both about the weight of your bow and about the, the way that it's bending. So get yourself as short of a long string as you can. Let's head over to the tillering tree. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about the tillering tree. Once again, I have another video on how to build and use a tillering tree. Check that out. I recommend building one. It's cheap. It's easy. All you need is a space to do it, and you can even get creative with that. I don't recommend tillering sticks, which is the board with the notches in it, for the main reason that holding your bow at a, in a drawn position for an extended period of time is really hard on your bow, and that's exactly what those do. I know a lot of people use them. Um, I think it just overstresses your bow and in, invites um, set and possibly even breaking your bow. So anyway, we're going to use the tillering tree here. For now, I'm just going to center my bow here on the rest, add my scale. When I'm first putting the bow on the tillering tree, I'm not bending it a lot. I just want to get an idea of how the limbs are moving and a basic sense of where my weight's at. So my goal is 50 pounds. Right now I'm at 50 pounds at 14 inches. That means I've got a long way to go with my tillering, which is good. That gives me lots of wiggle room to get things bending really well. So one thing that I'm noticing right off the bat here is that my left limb seems a bit stronger than my right limb. So I'm going to mark that off and know to take off some material on the left side until I get it bending evenly with the right. That's what we're doing right now is just looking for problems in the tiller. It might be one limb bending more than the other, or it might be a particular area on a limb that's bending too much or not enough. So make yourself some marks so you'll remember, and then do a little bit to correct the mistakes that you see. Take a little bit of wood off an area that seems stiff, take a little bit of wood off of a limb that seems too strong, and then check it again and see if you did enough to register any difference. And if you need to do a little bit more, then do what you need to do until you can't find any problems in your bow. And what we're looking for is just a real gradual, even bend going out the length of each limb. 
Now this stage of the bow making um, gets pretty repetitive. We're going to check the bow, whether it's with floor tillering, long string tillering. We're going to make sure that we like what we see. If we don't like what we see, we're going to take wood off where we need to take it off to correct the problem. And we're just going to keep repeating that process. And every time every we time take, we wood, take off the wood off the bow, it's going to get a little bit weaker, meaning that, that the draw weight is going to be reduced. And that's going to get us closer and closer to our goal. So we just want to make sure that whenever we're taking wood off the bow, that we're doing it in a purposeful way that's improving our tiller. Our goal is to get to a point where we can't see any problems. And then we're just going to do even wood removal on each limb. For example, if we're using the scraper, we might do 50 strokes on one limb and 50 strokes on the other, which theoretically will reduce the draw weight of the bow while maintaining the good tiller that we have. There are two important rules that I want you to always follow whenever you're drawing a bow at any stage um, during the tillering process. The first rule is we never pull further than we need to to see a problem that needs to be addressed. If you pull it down a little bit and you can already see that there's a spot that's working way too hard or one limb is working way harder than the other, stop. Don't pull it any further. All you're doing is stressing out that spot or that limb more than it needs to be. Fix the problem, come back, check to see if it's still there. If you're not seeing any problems while you're pulling, the other rule just kind of keeps you in a safe zone for how far to pull your bow. The general rule is that we never pull the bow past our target draw weight. So on this particular bow, I'm going for a 50 pound bow. That means when I pull, when I get to 50 pounds, I stop, don't go any further. Even if that means like in this case that I'm only pulling it down to 14 inches. As I reduce the, the wood on the belly, I'm going to be pulling further down, 15 inches, 16 inches, but I'm always going to stop at 50 pounds, or if I see a problem, even if that's before 50 pounds. If you follow those two rules religiously while you're tillering, you're going to have a much higher success rate on getting a good shooting bow. So I did a little work on the side that was too strong. I did a couple passes with the farrier's rasp evenly along that limb just to take a little bit of strength out of that limb to get it to match with the other. And then I pulled out my card scraper and I did about 50 full length strokes on each limb just to reduce the overall weight, draw weight of the bow a little bit. And so now when I pull down, the limbs look more balanced with each other. And now at 14 inches where I was before, it's only 44 pounds, 45 pounds. At 15 inches, it's 50 pounds. So I did enough work that I essentially gained another inch in our draw length at 50 pounds. And for me, that is a general goal. When I'm doing a session of wood removal between times that I have it up on the tillering tree, I like to come back to the tillering tree and have gained about an inch of draw length. And that makes me feel like I'm taking enough wood off that I'm making progress towards my goal, but I'm not taking so much off that we're traveling in leaps and bounds down to our 28 inch draw length um, before I feel like I've got a good handle on the tiller. So my goal right now is to continue looking for any problems, removing wood specifically where I need to to address those problems. But if I don't see any problems, do some even wood removal on both limbs so that I can get that draw length to go out. And when I get it down to about 20 inches, so 50 pounds at 20 inches, then I'm going to feel like I'm in a good place um, to go ahead and put a short string on the bow. That's kind of an arbitrary number. What we really want to see is that we're getting you know, a fair amount of tip movement that we've got in even bend. And different bowyers put the string, the short string on their bow at different times. I tend to be on the earlier side. Some people wait till later to put it on. I don't trust what the long string is telling me exactly about how the limbs are bending. 
because there's a different physics with the long string versus the short string in terms of how it pulls on the, the bow. Long string is going to pull more directly down on the tips, where a short string is going to be pulling more in, and it changes the shape of the bend. So I like to get to the point where I can see the true bend as it's going to be with a short string sooner rather than later. When you're making your first bows, it's good to have a little bit of concreteness in deciding when to string the bow for the first time. You'll get a feel for it as you make more bows, and you'll probably get confident to do it a little bit more early. But I picked that 20 inch number um, because with this, with this long string here, that's not very long, it's not drooping down too much, it, the weight that I'm getting here is gonna correspond pretty accurately to the draw weight even when the short string is on there. So if I'm at 50 pounds at 20 inches with this long string here, once I brace the bow, it's probably gonna be about 50 pounds at 20 inches um, with the short string as well. And so that's gonna give me another eight inches of tillering to really refine the tiller and get it to bend well and I feel comfortable with that. So for this project let's shoot for that. Let's do the long string until we get down to 20 inches at our target draw weight and then we'll put it on the short string. So I'm going to continue this process of removing wood, checking it on the tiller, feeling the taper with my fingers, trying to get about an inch of progress between each wood removal. So I'm going to do that and I'm gonna meet back up with you when I've got it out to 20 inches with the long string. So I'm in one of my scraper sessions here where I'm taking even strokes off of each side. I've already done 50 strokes on the other side. I'm gonna do 50 strokes on this side with my card scraper. So I just wanted to show you what it looked like when I was taking off even strokes. I'm going from one end all the way to the other trying to stay consistently in the middle so that I'm not favoring one edge or the other. And one thing that we have to be mindful of, especially on a pyramid bow where there's such a uh, huge difference in the width here at the tip to the width out here, the narrower the, the, the surface area is, the more aggressive the tool can be. So it's gonna, it's gonna be able to take more wood off out here and progressively less out here. So be mindful of that. There's ways you can compensate for it. You can push a little lighter out here and then push progressively harder as you go in. You can just do more strokes in here. Just pay attention and make sure it's not getting too thin out here. It's really easy to whittle away your outer limbs to nothing um, if you're not being mindful of it. But that aside, I'm just going to start counting my strokes. One, two, three, four, and so on. You should be getting substantial curls from your scraper. If you're not, it needs to be sharpened. I have a video on how to sharpen a card scraper. Um, you should check that out if you haven't used one before. Having a sharp scraper is really important and when it's sharp it's a really effective wood removal tool. So I'm going to do some more scrapes on here so that the limbs are balanced. I'm going to check it again. I'm getting close to my 20 or my 50 pounds at 20 inches so that I'll be ready to brace the bow for the first time soon. So once I get to that point I'll check back with you. Just wanted to show you here quick uh, the end result of my long string tellering. I've done about four or five scraping sessions to get here and my goal was to get to about 50 pounds at 20 inches which is exactly where I'm at. Now things that I'm looking for are an even bend on each limb and make sure that each limb is bending proportionally to the other limb, so one's not doing more work than the other. I like what I see. I'm going to go ahead and put a short string on this bow at low brace. I've got my short string here. I slip the top loop on past the tip and slide it down on the limb, and then I get the bottom loop in my grooves. This string should be about three inches shorter than the bow from knock to knock. And then I'll twist it so that it's a little bit 
closer to the knock than that because I'm going for a low brace. Um, a full brace is about six and a half inches and I probably want about maybe four inches. And I'll show you what I mean. At this stage in the tillering, I like to use a stringer. I made my own from this strap, nylon strap. I folded over the ends and sewed on some cups. I don't like the stringers that are made for fiberglass recurves that have the pad that sit lower down on the limb. I like to have the cups all the way out at the end. So just lift it up and slide the string groove into the knock. And there I have it at low brace. Yep, just, just about four inches from the handle to the string. I did probably about four or five scraping sessions of about 50 scrapes on each limb, getting out to 50 pounds at 20 inches on the long string. I liked how it was bending at 50 pounds at 20 inches. It seemed nice and even. So I went ahead and got it ready to put on the short string. A short string is going to be usually about three inches shorter than your bow. Um, it's going to be the string that you can use as your final string for your bow. Once again, if you don't know how to make a string, um, please check out my video on how to make a Flemish loop um, bow string. So when you first brace your bow, you don't necessarily want to put it at full brace, which is usually about six, six and a half inches from here to the string, usually about the distance um, to the top of your thumb. So you can see that mine's several inches shy of that. Um, so this is what I would consider a low brace. I don't find much need to go a lot lower than this. I've already gotten a lot of information um, from floor tillering and from the long string. I know that my bend is pretty even. I know about what weight I'm at. So I feel pretty confident on putting a short string on there and getting it up a little bit so that I can get some information from looking at my bow. So once I have a short string on my bow here at low brace, there's a few things that I like to look at. So one thing that I'm noticing right away is that the space between the belly and the string here is slightly more than the space between the belly and the string here. So this limb is a little bit weaker than this limb. So that tells me that I need to take a few more scrapes off of this limb to get it bending like this limb is. Otherwise, the bend looks fairly even going from the handle out towards the tip. I don't see any major flat spots or weak spots. So I'm pretty happy with the overall shape. I just need to get this limb bending a little bit more. Another thing that I can look at is the string alignment. Now you would think that with a straight board that you would never have any issues with string alignment. Um, the string alignment is when the string passes directly through the center of the handle when you're sighting down your bow. If it's clearly to one side or the other, then your string alignment is off and you'll need to make some adjustments. But on mine, the string alignment's looking pretty good. So now that we've got it to low brace, I know my string alignment's good. I know my tiller overall is pretty good. This limb's a little bit too strong, so I'm gonna take some strokes off of this. Once I correct that, then I'll be able to move forward with taking a little bit more weight off the bow. We'll get to that in the next video. From here on out is what I consider the final tillering. Thank you for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions and stay tuned for part five.